Oklahoma City Thunder. Here's what makes OKC so dangerous. Very few, we could say, we say a lot of different things that are relatively critical to some degree at times about a Kevin Durant and, and a Russell Westbrook. Skip Bayless, I could even ask you this rhetorically, albeit, who resemble more, who resembles sharks in blood infested waters in the NBA better than Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant? When they smell blood, and they have you. I'm not talking about fourth quarter leads going awry. I'm talking about when they got a game, when they win games on the road, when they go up in a series, they close the deal. And what you don't want to do is put them in a situation where they go up 2-0, beating, winning both games on the road, and then they go back to their home court and they got you vulnerable. You yep. don't want to do that if you're the Golden State Warriors. This is a must-win situation. They have to win game two tonight. I believe they will win game two. I predicted before the series began that it would go seven. I predicted that within the first four games, each team would steal a game on the other's home court. I'm holding true to that because I think Golden State will win tonight, and I think they'll go on the road and win either game three or four in OKC, and it'll go seven games. But make no mistake, that's prognosticating. The fact is... They can't afford to go down 0-2. Kevin Durant is not going to shoot 10 for 30 again. He's not missing 20 shots for a second consecutive game. He's a superstar of the highest order, and he's highly efficient offensively. He's not going to struggle the way that he did in game one. Russell Westbrook showed me a lot, Skip, because here's why. To go to have that awful first half that he had Monday night, and then to come out in that second half and go at Steph Curry the way he did. There was a few of those shots right in Steph Curry's face. This is what I was fantasizing about all season long leading up to their matchup on Super Bowl Eve. Remember that? And I kept talking about how I couldn't wait to see them go against one another. What happened last night is what I thought would happen February 6th. So I'm just looking at it and I'm saying Golden State, has to answer the bell. They have to respond, and they're going to have to figure out a way to deal with the combination that Billy Donovan deserves a lot of credit for, putting Steven Adams on the court at the same time with Enos Cantor. Two big guys who can move their feet and actually defend while not losing their rebounding advantage. They're going to have to figure out how to answer that call because considering the rebounding advantage that they had, particularly on the offensive boards, you're just giving Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook more opportunities to hurt you and they will kill you if you do that. This is a must-win situation. The Warriors are not in trouble unless they lose this game. But because they must win this game, we must acknowledge they're in some trouble. They have got to win game two tonight. So, bottom line, if I'm hearing you correctly, they're in no more trouble than you thought they would have been anyway in this circumstance. Correct. Like you thought they would lose Correct. one of those two games at home anyway. Correct. Okay. Allow me to say, before I give you my answer to this, if the referees come out tonight wearing Oklahoma City jerseys, I, 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 then I think actually Golden State's <laughs> in huge trouble at home. Because I'm starting to wonder. I'm sorry. I know they killed my Spurs. I give it up to them. But... But I'm just going to say this quickly. I don't want to dwell on this. I want to beat it to mm -hmm. death. But, but my Spurs got hurt by the referees. Ginobili got hurt, obviously, on that non-call. And then there were two non-calls that were missed. Even the NBA had acknowledged it wow. in the last minute of game five. And then you and I did not get to discuss the clear, glaring travel that was missed with 17.2 seconds left the other night. Down, the, the Golden State down three but would have had a shot to tie. Go ahead. Hold on before you go into your point about OKC and Golden State. I want you to know that even though I was incredibly busy, I did have a moment to watch you talk about that. You watched? The next day. <laughs> yes, I, oh, man, you, 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 oh. You're my man. I'm going, you're my man. I'm going to watch you Why now. Why didn't you call okay, in? I made sure. Well, you know, because I had to do the upfront oh. and I was in a place where I couldn't call in. But what I'm saying to you is this, Skip Bayless. <laughs> I watched you whine about oh, that. I and that's what I was you, tempted you, to call you, it. You it was a travel. No, no, no. No, 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 no. No, you were telling the truth. Yeah. I didn't say you weren't telling the truth. Yeah. I totally agree. It okay. wasn't travel. I said I watched you whine. Yeah. Okay? This is what you do. Get mm. over it. Your Spurs lost. Okay? Well, they, they lost. They got robbed, but it's okay. They, 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 they didn't get robbed. Yeah. They lost. Like they lost. 
Stop whining. Yeah, okay. I just, now you could go on with your okay. point about well, OKC to work. I, but I stop said, whining about your Spurs. Okay, as, as I said yesterday, that Oklahoma City literally stole game one. But we'll, we'll leave it at that. Now, back to what you, you were talking about. This is a character test tonight for the Golden State Warriors at home, where they, as we know, rarely lose. Their, their character will be tested, and it will be revealed once again. And I have learned my lesson not to doubt this team's backbone, its mental toughness, its makeup. It's extremely high, starting with that little number 30 who leads this team, that two-time MVP. And I think you will see them play at the highest level. I also think it's a freebie, a free shot for Oklahoma City. No real pressure tonight. They can just let it fly. And to your point, I seriously doubt Kevin Durant will go 10 for 30. I think those numbers will skew in the positive direction. I sincerely doubt that Russell Westbrook will go one for eight in the first half. I'm sure he will have a, a better overall statistical game tonight. I also, like you, think Golden State will win a close game, a hard-fought game, and I think this is going to be great theater tonight with Golden State in some immediate trouble at home, although we did yesterday scale of 1 to 10, how much trouble, and I went to a 3 instead of DEFCON 10. Okay, so now, what, what happened the other night? You and I did not get to discuss this. May I remind you, please, Golden State was up 13 at halftime. To my eyes, Golden State took foot off gas in third quarter in a dangerous way that I don't usually see them do. I thought my man Steph got a little too cool for school in the third quarter and started making those carelessly cute passes where you sit back and say, well, what was that? What are you doing? Behind the back, through the legs, right to a thunder for a fast break the other way and a dunk? What are you doing, Steph? And Again, you were right. Russell Westbrook torched Steph in that stretch. But remember, it didn't start for a while. It was actually the second half of the third quarter. Russell Westbrook finally got a three to fall with 7.02 left in the third quarter. Remember that? It fell. And all of a sudden, the ceiling fell in on Steph and company because Russell Westbrook do, did what he is highly capable of doing. He scored 19 in six minutes. That was it. From seven minutes down to one minute left in the third quarter, he scored 19 points. And all of a sudden, it was a ball game. And it was nip-tuck in the fourth quarter. And yet, I got to ask you this. Do you really think Steph's going to go one for six in the fourth quarter again tonight? Do you think as a team they'll shoot one for ten from three in the fourth well, quarter tonight? I don't think so. Well, I agree with you there. Um, I definitely think that Steph Curry is going to uh, rise up to the challenge. But let's put it in this proper perspective, Skip, why he's going to do that. Steph Curry was put on notice. You ain't dealing with some ordinary no, dude in Russell I agree. Westbrook. Yep. This brother's no, a superstar. Yep. And, and by the way, not only is he a superstar, he is the most ruthless competitor in the game yep. today. I'll buy that. This dude is vicious, and he's not taking a back step. He's not scared. He's not kowtowing. He's not getting caught up in all the hype and hoopla involved in Steph Curry. He is coming for him. And so Steph Curry, let, let, let's just let, respectfully, because he's a two-time league MVP, yeah. incredibly lovable. We respect and love everything about Steph Curry. I, I, he's, a, he's a treasure to the game of basketball. I mean, no disrespect to him whatsoever. I'm acknowledging his greatness when I make the statement that I'm about to make to him. Yeah. It is this. He needs to be put on notice right now. He does. You don't get to be too cool for school yeah. with Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. This is Russell Westbrook. Steph Curry need to show some damn respect and come out there with his A game and understand that he needs his A game in order to beat this brother. Because mm -hmm. this brother's no joke. No. So Russell Westbrook, it's time that we stop sitting up here and just acting like this dude is some sidekick. This is Russell Westbrook. I understand he ain't Kevin Durant because nobody, I mean, there's only two people in the world, as far as I'm concerned, who compare to Kevin Durant. But Russell Westbrook is a dude that you do not take lightly. It is highly disrespectful to be too, if, if, if what you're yeah. saying is right. You too, school for, too cool for school. Yeah. You all laissez-faire and, all, you know, nonchalant. Nah, this is Russell Westbrook. You had better bring okay. your game 
Otherwise, he'll take you out of here. Okay, last quick point. The one advantage Oklahoma City might have again tonight is a guy you've been tough on on this show, a guy who had a pretty good year, who's not Bo Gus anymore. He's Andrew Bogut. Stephen A., I don't think he's right. I don't think he's healthy. Well, he looked limpy in the second half, and he only lasted five minutes and 23 seconds in the second half. He is their I'll rim protector. He keeps Russell Westbrook from the rim. And he, I don't know if he can go. He's got a knee well, and a, I, I, a I'll groin. Give you, I'll give you credit for this. First of all, let me say Andrew Bogut is no longer Andrew Bogus. I'm going to give him his respect. He fits in this system with this team. He has proven to be a quality player, rim protector, rebounder. And by the way, I have serious doubts, Skip, for the record as to whether or not Golden State can win this series without him. I agree. Because without him, without him, that elevates the necessity for Maurice Spates to step up and be a big boy down low. He can shoot and score, but I don't know if he can do that. No. Nope. And then it puts more onus on the undersized Draymond Green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OKC can win this series unless Andrew Bogut plays. Yep. With the emergence of Steven Adams, who has been sensational. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The main yes. event, 9 Eastern tonight. Ooh. It all goes down. I, Cannot I, wait. I, I hyped myself up for that. Yeah, you did. You both yeah. did. You hyped everyone else up, too. <laughs> Warriors haven't lost back-to-back -back games since games two and three against Cleveland last year. Twitter fingers got the best of Dikembe Mutombo last night before the NBA draft lottery. We'll tell you what he tweeted and deleted after the break, and we'll react to it. First take, just get started. I think you like me like that.